Welcome everyone. I'm Esther Kovac, co-founder of Drone Talks and here at the UAV uh, Expo in Las Vegas 24, I have Volatus with me uh, and it's very excited because I got not only one decision maker to the company, but two today. So let me introduce my guest, maybe first Daniela, if you can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Daniela Gani. I'm a head of marketing and communications for Volatus Aerospace. Thank you so much. And Abby? Hi, I'm uh, Abino Singhvi. Uh, I go with Abby. I'm the CFO of Volatus Aerospace. Fantastic. So you just did a nutshell. If someone doesn't know Volatus, how Volatus makes the money? What's the business case of Volatus and the different services? Um, well, it's easy. Uh, I would say drones are us. So there are three segments when you look at drones. One is the value-added reseller. So that's Volatus. We do it all in US, UK and Canada. Second is the drone services where we use drones to provide different kinds of uh, intelligence data uh, insights to our customers. And third is industry, which is still not adopted drones, but they will eventually. And we classify them as uh, aviation services, where we still use helicopters and fixed wing planes. And that's the third segment we have today. And these are the three segments uh, we've been generating revenue. We just closed the acquisition with Drone Delivery Canada last week. So that's the fourth segment that we had, and that's into cargo delivery. Oh, congratulations. So maybe just uh, I saw this announce actually on LinkedIn. So I am wondering how this acquisition happened or what, what is this about? How did you consolidate it? So this was in, I would say, one of the longest acquisitions purely because we were merging two publicly listed companies. So everything started back in late December last year, it took us almost, I would say, nine months to reach where we are today. And the intent was to bring the blend of technology and the commercialization engine. So Drone Delivery Canada is a technology arm. They had the technological regulatory expertise, all the right licenses, and the most importantly, the OCC, which is the Operations Control Center, uh, to operate drones remotely and autonomously. Whereas Volatus, about the company that has the ground realities, commercialization, and operational expertise. And all they did is merging both of them together to create the perfect blend of the future of drone company. So, Daniela, because you're a communication expert, how does it work when two companies merge? You know, um, is it going to go with one brand or the two brands stays? Or, or because, you know, this consolidation is a very hot topic, so you're not the only one who consolidates. So can we learn a little bit about that, please? Sure. Uh, we've done about... 18 acquisitions at this point, I believe. Wow. <laughs> and, and so, but the merger is, is, is quite a bit of different animal, as Abby just said. And what you do is we looked at Drone Delivery Canada as, as a regional brand. It's, it's very, Canada is in its title. So it's very obvious that it's a regional brand. So it will be a, a sister brand uh, underneath the Vladis Aerospace Incorporated. So we've changed to Incorporated. Uh, as as a part of that, but we chart, but we will actually be uh, trading under our stock ticker symbol uh, of drone delivery Canada. Fantastic! And I know you're also responsible for investment uh, relations. So um, you know, investment is another hot topic this year. Revenue generations, investments, and the talk show. It's one of the hottest topic. Um, how difficult at the today climate at 2024, not the past, but today to raise investment for companies generally, how you feel? And uh, is it different than like five years ago it was? Uh, what's, your, what's your gut feeling on that? Well, I, it's, it's definitely different. I think um, just like when we had adoption uh, and there was a hype cycle five years ago where everyone was talking about drones, there's going to be the next big thing. I think, you know, we've We've gone over that Gartner hype cycle and, you know, investors have taken that ride with us. And now they, we need to have, they're looking for long-term business and they're looking for the longevity. They're looking for revenue generating uh, businesses that have a real foundation in good business practices. So it's less about investing in the technology and something that's bright and shiny and more about that. About that. And what would you say, Abby? Yeah. No, I think it's a tricky one because uh, if I have to compare the industries, what cannabis has gone through in the last seven, eight years, drone is going through the same phase. But oh, wow. there's one difference. Canada, the interest in cannabis is more or less lost. 
but the interest in drone has changed. And when I say that, the investors have become more mature. They have grown up. They understand the technologies. They understand the application. And they understand the people around it. And now a lot of investors are also educating themselves on the regulatory changes because there are so many different forces that governs the drone industry that five years back when the in, when it was still nascent and when it just exploded, investors for them it was like crack cocaine. Everyone wanted to put money in the drone company. You know, if it's a tech company, it's a service company, even if being a value-added reseller. Everyone was grazing capital at 10x, 20x, 30x multiple of their revenue. And uh, as the industry matured, and we have gone through different cycles, we've gone through COVID, we've gone through, the Chrome is going through war, now it's almost the bridge of recession. So with different cycles, what it gave investors an opportunity to do, sit back and look at different companies and how they are performing. So what has happened today is, the investors are mature, they understand very well what's happening with the companies and the application. So whenever they look at the companies for investment, they, they have a sort of pseudo matrix. So, and if I had to explain you, let's classify into small, medium, large companies. So any company that's making less than 5 million is small, 5 to 20 million dollar, I would say medium, and more than 20 million is large. This framework is still, it does not apply to other companies because in the, in the overall markets, still 20 million is a small company. But for drone, it's still a big deal in the industry yeah. we live in. And then investors say, that's, the, that's my, let's say, y-axis. And my x-axis is, what type of company is it? Is it a service company? Is it a technology company? Or is it it's just a value-added reseller? And then investors look at different phase the companies are and assess whether it's a emerging segment, emerging company, or it's more of a mature company. And so that's why you'll see a lot of investments in the drone companies have gone down over the period of time. Industry is going through a phase of consolidation because what happens is when the capital is scarce, when there is a lack of capital, the at the end of the day, companies need to move forward. And that's when they go to the waves of mergers and acquisition. And we have seen this. There's a good, bad and the ugly. The good thing is, you know, when the when there's no capital, lack of capital, the acquisition becomes cheaper. Because now, as a, as volatiles, like we've been acquiring companies, when we look at companies, the we can look at the company, we can look at what phase they are in, what how much capital they do need, and then we can we can frame them. Great company, desperate company, which phase they are in, and then we the the acquirer has an ability to dictate the terms. That's one. The bad thing is lack of capital attacks everyone, not just small company, but even companies like us, right? Will add us. Yeah. And the ugly is a lot of the cash flow. And the cash flow. We had cash flow problem. I mean, I'm very open in my own show. This was like uh, I'm not sure if you have the same problem, but we sold like a service, and it pays on delivery, but it takes us half a year to deliver that service. You know. So in half a year later, I will get the money, but until I need to you absolutely. Know, sustain my operation. And like a, we talked about this. Uh, that that yeah. is supply chain problem. Everyone faces, we face this too, where if even if we have to place an order, the OEM says you have to place everything up front and customer pays us 30 days after. Now that stretches everyone's capital. So for a bigger, larger company that has access to capital, the problem is less severe. But as the companies have, depending on more private capital, the problem becomes much more larger for them. And that's when the companies forgo sales activities and they have to decide whether they need that sales or not. So long answer to short question, but yes, a lot has changed in the last five years. Yeah, but this means maybe we are more mature as an industry, do you think? Or, or is it doesn't mean... Yeah, I think the maturity is definitely there. I, I mean, we're at Commercial UAD Expo, and even the conversations we're having with the end user is much more mature. So the, they they are understanding the the technologies. Uh, they're looking. They they understand where the value is, and they're also looking to more advanced capabilities and they're looking for somebody who can really support them on the next level so i think from that point of view i think it is showing maturity and i think consolidation is another sign of maturity you're, you're bringing together uh 
to, to your graphical uh, capabilities uh, that strengthen the end company as a result. You know, we see that way through Delivery Canada and ourselves, where we're bringing technology and the commercialization capability serially strengthen each other. Um, I think that's I think that's bringing a lot of maturity to the industry. I, I think that it, it's a tough time, but it's it's there's a great horizon at, at the end of this tunnel. And Abby, um, I'm very excited about that. You were already at the company, at Volatus, when the company went to the stock market. And how is that? So, for example, you know, I have my company and I phone you up and I say, OK, just imaginary. Now you don't work for Volatus, but I phone you up and say, you look, I want to go to the stock market. How does this work? How does this work for Volatus in practice? You know, because we... I'm an engineer. We know very little about these things, right? Like, uh, educate us, please. So, hindsight 101, if you tell me, Abby, <laughs> let's take the company public, my first responsible response would be like, why? Yoli. Yeah, that's very good. Why is that good? Uh, why Volatus went on uh, the stock market? Why Volatus is public? So we had different reasons. One, well, the market was hot, very easy. The capital was easily and more, most importantly, accessible. But the second time, uh, second reason is, and that's the bigger reason, we had private interest, we had venture capital, we had private equity investors who wanted to participate in the company. But for us, taking public was the right option because for us, M&A was the core part of the strategy. We, we saw how nascent the industry was and even today, the market is fragmented. The, yeah. There are so many great companies that operate locally and within the geographical region. They are still not global. And the only thing that restricts them from being global is the capital. For Volatus, we didn't want it to get restricted to be a local or, a, you know, to be a company that operates only in Canada. So for us, going public was one of the key drivers, not just capital, but... Thinking globally. Thinking globally, and it made our equity our second currency that enabled us to do acquisition using equity. Like the merger with Drone Delivery Canada, it's all equity. There's been zero cash exchange between two entities, right? So that's only possible when you're a public list of them. Oh, well, for example, do you see? I didn't know that. That's only possible if you are, uh, obviously, it makes sense. But I never thought about it, right? Fantastic. And uh, Daniela, what's next? Uh, what is excited at Volatus side? If we don't talk about finances and revenue generation, anything else on the technology side? Well, our I'm, I'm incredibly excited about a number of different initiatives that, uh, that are ongoing. I mean, bringing Drone Delivery Canada on board means that our operational capabilities have just be grown exponentially. There is a tested uh, technology, again, bringing that technology into play, bringing in the cargo into play, but also watching uh, programs like our SEER program kind of grow, which um, if, for those of you who are aware of what the SEER program is. It's led by uh, Matthew Johnson, and what he does is he goes to school districts. He works with the school district, the community, and and local universities to identify problems like Dutch elm disease or uh, problems like litter on beaches. And, and this is, so far, we're doing in North America. We've done some in Florida. We've done some in, in Canada as well, where we bring students in the high school age we teach them about data acquisition. We teach them about how to actually look at the data, how to analyze it, and then they go out into the field and they learn how to fly their drone to capture that data. And the data that gets collected is then used to create AI algorithms that can then become part of the solution. So it becomes a product. So it's a very you know, inclusive uh, program that that's really exciting and unique in the space. And I think it's it's helping us get that interest in what can you do with drones, but also with sensors and what kind and, and you know, the skill set that are it's really required in in STEM to be enter into the industry and be successful. Fantastic. Congratulations for this program involving early age uh, students already to drones. So anything else you guys want to share, Abby, as a final remark on the interview? Anything about revenue generation finances, you know, on an industry, on the show? Anything comes to your mind? Yeah, uh, I would share one thing is, though it's it has become difficult to raise capital, there is a lot of, as we say, dry powder, which is capital available in the market. 
I think it's a matter of time. We need to this, and when I say we, it's the entire industry, all the companies need to know where to tap into because there is capital available. There are investors still very excited about the industry, very bullish about the industry. And, and uh, I, yeah, it's just need to find the right people. I just don't lose hope. There is capital. I think uh, everyone tries to go to venture capitalist. Technology company, yes, maybe that's the answer. But if you're not a tech company, if you're a service company or a value-added reseller company, probably individual high net worth individuals, family offices, that's the way because those are the group that are always interested into uh, these companies. So, yeah, there's, there's no blanket or no one answer that these are the set of investors. You need to keep scouting. I think the most important thing is keep talking. The industry can only grow by partnering. And the partnering doesn't mean product partnering or service partnering. It also means when you need help, go and ask for help. Because I always say to my team, if you don't ask, you don't get. So I think that's, that's the most important aspect. I would, that's the final remarks I would make. So it works in finances as well. You know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yep. Same. Uh, Daniela, any final remarks? Uh, advice? Yeah, I, I think when you're talking to investors, you really you really have to think about who your audience is and why they why they're there and what they're really interested in. It's not going to be the same as your end user. Your end user is going to want to know what the solution and what's in it for me, but they want to they want to know that your company is healthy, that it's growing, that you have a solid plan in place, and they want to stay on top of what you're doing. So communicating with them regularly and keeping them in the loop of what you're doing and why is an essential part of that relationship that you're building because investors like any all human beings they invest in a relationship and that feeling uh, as well as as the business itself yeah thank you so much for the interview thank you so much for accepting my invitation we were here at the commercial uev 2024 with volatus we will put of course the web page of volatus in the description and we will tag our two guests and follow us for more content like this on the channel. Thank you.